Okay, I'm back. Um, continuing from what we called video one. All right, so the next thing I'd like to show you is exactly what goes on with these uh, circuit boards. Uh, each one of these work. So I have 12 volts here in my hand. Uh, it goes to a transformer that's plugged back there. I can't see it behind all the mess. But the thing I want you to see now is that when I plug this in, I'll plug it into this particular unit first, one style, and I have a scope back here. And when I turn it on, you can see humps. And I'm just using um, a probe as an antenna, and that's oscillating about 30,000 hertz. And coming off the tip of that wire, that white wire, is about 20,000 volts, 20 to 25,000 volts. And that goes into the center of the plasma ball and causes the uh, gas to ionize and create the Birkeland currents that you see in the plasma ball. Uh, so here is one style and they all work the same. Transformer, driving transistor, basic oscillator. Uh, forget the mic circuit because we're going to disable that. I'm going to turn this off and you notice that signal went flat pretty flat jittering plug in another version of the plasma ball they all work off of 12 volts turn it on and there you go again there's the oscillation roughly 30,000 Hertz and again the transformer and driving transistor and a basic oscillator now turn this one off plug it plug a third one in and the same deal There is the um, basic oscillator, again about 30,000 hertz, uh, no different than the others. Turn this one off, and we'll do the last one, but I'm going to have to cut this wire, and when I put it back together, I'll just have to resplice it. So, bear with me. I get the hefty dikes right here, boom, 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 and I'm clipping it. Oh, just destroyed the... Just destroyed the uh, <laughs> the unit. We're gonna get this casing out of the way. We do not need this or housing. And I will take this off the plastic uh, uh, case. It's just screwed on with one, two. It looks like three screws. And they actually have a separate power switch. And we'll modify this one. And you get a better look at it now too, by the way, since I have it out here. So there's the transistor. There's the um, transformer. That's the wire that the juice comes off of. I cut it very, very short. That was just so I can strip it and I'll splice it back together to the other one. And here's, of course, the basic oscillator, which is basically a circuit board all onto itself on top of what we call the motherboard. Believe me, when I start taking this apart and showing you what you have to disconnect, it is simple. Uh, it is simple. There's going to be somebody out there in every part of the world that's going to be able to duplicate this and make these for others. And a lot of people uh, won't need any help. They'll be able to work with this video directly. Um, and then these people, hopefully, that will take this idea and elevate it with better circuit designs, uh, maybe make their own little motherboard with their own transformer and transistor with a, an Arduino and so forth, uh, or some other microprocessor unit and something I can talk about maybe at the end of this video. All right, so let's power this one up too. So how do you do that? You just plug in the power again. Make sure it's off. I think it's off. Turn on the power. Oh, there's those humps. And there's the oscillator. Now that looks a slightly little different and I got a feeling because I cut the wire so short that I'm getting a little feedback between the output of the uh, end of the wire and the transformer, but you can see again it's oscillating at roughly 30,000 hertz, maybe a little bit less. Um, okay, so I have three boards, four boards that I'm going to modify. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through the details of showing you what I do in each one, so I'll pick one. I'm going to turn this off and unplug it. Let's take this. I'm really curious. I love this transformer. Let's take this big transformer. This will be the one I modify. 
So there's something I want to show you on the bottom of the circuit board. I'm going to turn the lights on now so we can get a little bit better view from the camera. The transformer only has two wires that we're really concerned with uh, that are actually part of the circuit board. This wire here is an independent coil. It's uh, inductively coupled to a smaller coil and and it just radiates to the uh, air. And it radiates, um, like I said, 20, 25,000 volts. But on the bottom of the circuit board, and they're all the same, they're all the same. There's a transformer lead, and I'm pointing to it right now. And it's pretty easy if you look back and forth, back and forth, you can see that there's two main um, leads that are plugged into or connected to LAN patterns on here. And one of them always goes, always, without exception, always goes to the right side of the transistor. Uh, excuse me, the center of the transistor. Center of the transistor. Here's the transistor. It's got three leads to it. And one of the leads, and one of the leads always goes to the center. And that lead happens to be what they call the collector that's immaterial to you. Um, you don't really need to know that. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate that transformer lead from that center transistor uh, lead. And we're going to put a thermal switch across that. So if the th transistor gets too hot, it will automatically shut down. Now let me show you this other board. Just grab another one. bottom of it looks really different but there we have the same deal we have one of the leads the center lead of the transistor going to one side of the transformer now this transformer happens to have um, its base grounded that's you know you don't have to concern yourself with that what I'm trying to show you is there is a lean I'm pointing to it and you can see and if you follow it goes around and around and it goes right to the center wire on this transistor right there the center wire there's three wires on there you can see them one two three and we're going to do the same thing we're going to put a cut in that land and we're going to put a thermal switch across that and i'll show you what the thermal switch looks like in a few minutes let's take another board this one already has the thermal switch connected and lo and behold look at this there is one lead to this transformer, one lead to this transformer, and it goes right to the middle of the transistors, or transistor, singular. And I've already cut that lead. And I'm gonna, see, hopefully you can see this. Right there, I'm pointing to it, right there, my finger's covering it. I've put a little slice in that lamp pattern, separating um, that lamp pattern going from the middle. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I wired a thermal switch that has two wires on it. And I wired it from there back to that center wire. And actually, I've, I've, I've mounted that wire right up here, which goes back to the middle land. So basically what happens is, is that when the transistor gets too hot, this thermal switch is normally closed contact, normally making um, a connection from that part of the transformer right to the middle wire on the transistor. When it closes, um, it, the plasma ball will run. But if it gets too hot, the switch will open and it will break the circuit. And that happens to be the collector, uh, I might have said it already, of the transistor. And it stops the drive, uh, driving of that transistor so it can't get any hotter. And then when the thermal switch cools down, um, the circuit refires up. And it is a saving grace to saving this transistor. And how did I mount this? And by the way, that's a glue. That's a heat sink glue that's holding that on there. Uh, so um, I have a write-up and I mentioned this about mounting this particular mechanical device uh, on the transistor. You do not have to do it. If you create a gating only plasma ball, like I did a video on the other day, you do not need this thermal resistor. One less step.
and gating only plasma balls are every bit as powerful as a full-fledged plasma ball that allows you to do direct modulation of this transformer and the circuitry and so forth. Um, why do I even bother making a full-fledged? Um, it was a process that I started and I found that there was uh, a few things, a few advantages and a lot of people wanted to be able to directly modulate the plasma and uh, the plasma balls that I've been shipping out allow that. So you can gate a plasma ball or you can directly mo modulate it. All right, so there we go. I believe that the Spooky Central offers those opportunities too, to gate or modul uh, directly modulate. Uh, but I'm not sure. I don't have a Spooky Central. Uh, couldn't afford one. Okay, so there's another circuit board. I'm wasting a lot of time. And did I do this on this one here? Yes, I think I did. Maybe not. If I didn't, at any rate, the same deal here. There's a wire going to the center of that transistor lead. It's right there. It's a LAN pattern. A LAN pattern is basically a copper connection that's physically attached to the board. And it's a, it's a printed circuit board. And uh, it completes the circuit from this transformer that I, I'm using right here. I'm pointing to, I'm tapping it. And it connects it to the center lead of that transistor. I'm going to cut that lead and I'm going to put a thermal switch on that too. And I'll heat sink a um, mechanical switch on directly onto this transistor. Uh, heat sink, I'm going to heat sink glue. Um, a, a mechanical uh, thermal switch right onto there. And work the wires th through the board, drill a couple of holes, and voila, I'll have a thermal switch mounted. I have to take the bottom off of this guy here to take a look at it. I'll do that um, in between videos, and I'll show you real quick uh, the pattern. I can tell you right now, it's going to be the same. There's that transistor right here, and its center lead is going to go to one end of the uh, secondary on this transformer. They're all the same. There's no difference. So no matter what ball you get, uh, I would imagine 24 volts are the same. They're all the same. Okay, I'm going to segment all these videos so I can put the pieces together later. Uh, thank you very much. We'll close this one down and start another video.